Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here and I really do appreciate your time. So I wanted to really quickly get on here and talk about this whole like really embarrassing situation with Tommy Sotomayor of all people and one of the young ladies that appeared on uh, the Fresh and Fit podcast. You know, basically these guys are the bastion of all of these types of complications, all these types of conversations. Oh, that's my sketchbook in the back. But these guys are usually, if, if ever there is conversations going on online about, you know, ashiness, dustiness, you know, uh, really just effeminate behavior, uh, disrespect towards black women, uh, disgruntled men, any any of these types of, you know, red pill, manosphere related types of topics, they will always be in the mix because they are the current leaders of sexually frustrated, disgruntled, uh, lonely men with poor social skills. So first I'm going to start with talking about what happened. I'm not going to play any clips because I don't want my video to be long and it's unnecessary. Fresh and Fit had this episode with Tommy Sotomayor came on as a guest. He, they also had other types of sex workers on there speaking. And this is something that they regularly do. They bring the type of women that they say are, you know, below them or that they're not worthy of real relationship and to be taken seriously. They constantly bring those types of women on um, as a way of like belittling them and talking down to them because they understand that their audience is full of men who could never even get in the presence of these women anyway and who usually can afford sex work. So they know their audience would love to see these type of women that they don't have access to being disrespected. So that's usually the premise of their podcast, right? So in this particular case, one of the women that they had on there had an encounter with Tommy Sotomayor, and he, you know, was saying all of these things to gaslight her, to jab at her, to kind of, like I said, belittle the very types of women that you know, these types of men are attracted to, that they don't have access to unless they have the money to afford their services. They get into a, a altercation, I believe it was a physical altercation. Later on that day, Tommy goes onto his Instagram and he posts this uh, caption along with this picture where he's saying he's pressing charges against her and he's standing up for all black men against black women and, and the constant abuse that we put on them and the fact that, you know, he can't hit her back. So this is his way of fighting her back. And, you know, it's just so like, it's really disappointing because truth be told back in the day when Tommy Sotomayor, like back, back in the day, before he even became infamous, he used to make content that was very balanced. And right. So he would criticize men, criticize women and, he would say things that I felt were poignant. And so, unfortunately, what happened was he started to morph into this self-hating sort of like caricature of a black man, like an Uncle Ruckus type of person. His main sort of hustle became disrespecting black women. Like he was one of the first to do it really on this YouTube space. And he kind of faded into obscurity and I think he was like making adult content or something like that. Like he was just doing different ways to hustle and make money because he was no longer the top, uh, you know, red pill content creator. Other sort of ones came in like the Kevin Samuels, uh, Fresh and Fit, like these other sort of um, manosphere uh, adjacent content creators started to come in and fill that space for the newer generation. So to hear that all these years later, he's still basically doing the same exact thing and if, and trying to kind of enter back into that space of, you know, being like the top <laughs> he man, woman haters content creator is really disappointing because I would have liked to see his sort of um, evolution into a more, you know, I don't know, just just a grown adult male. But it appears that he is still doing this and it could just be for, again, content. As I constantly say, a lot of these content creators in the manosphere know that their supporters, like the men that financially support them, are men that want to see other men disrespect women. They want to see other women get, uh, you know, knocked down a peg. And they want to see someone tell them, you're not special, you're not that beautiful, you're this, that, and the third, even though it's just for show. They love that. So maybe he's trying to capture some of that audience again. He's trying to start his his hustle back up. 
But I just wanted to say this briefly before I go. Number one, the young lady who agreed to go on Fresh and Fit's podcast, just let me say this to you, like, that have this mentality of, oh, well, because she said she went on the podcast because she, she thought they would treat her differently, right? Let me say this to you, if that is your mentality. If you are one of these women who think that being a pick-me, uh, think that being one of the boys, think that, you know, if you make yourself seem approachable, that it will win you that validation and attention from men. It's not. And let me tell you, as someone who has had many male best friends, because my interests tend to be the types of interests that a lot of men have. So like video games, you know, comic books, different types of fantasy lore. I'm into that type of shit. So my interests, a lot of times, will bring me into contact with a lot of men. So I have had male friends, like actual real male friends and not real male friends that I found out later. And so one of the things I could say is if you're seeking to personify this, I'm not like other girls The quickest way to not do that is to pretend to be this, oh, I'm special, I'm different, you know, I'm I'm pretty, I'm submissive. That's never going to work long term. If that's what you're really trying to do is get that male validation, it's not going to get you what you want, especially attention from the type of men that you want, right? So a lot of times... Again, the audience, the type of men that consists of a Kevin Samuels audience, a fresh and fit audience, the audience consists of the types of men that in the real world, not online, in the real world have, like I said, poor social skills, not many prospects in life. They're probably average looking or unattractive. Their, their personal hygiene is usually off. They don't have a mouthpiece or a way of communicating with women that is effective, you know, engaging. They're, they're usually they're usually some type of socially awkward and they do not have many successful interactions with women, which is why they have this 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 mentality. Right. So which is why they are drawn to a content creator like Fresh and Fit, because it allows them to find their community of men, of young men who have who feel rejected, who have been rejected and are not able to you know develop their own personal relationship successfully with women and have you know sexual relations of them they're not able to do that successfully and so instead of them channeling that energy into something more constructive to actually allow them to complete in the dating marketplace they become disgruntled sexually frustrated and they just basically become bitter and so these online spaces provide them echo chambers it provides them comfort so instead of the you know the truth of okay you need to fix this and you need to fix that you need to fix this and you need to become developed and you need to you need to develop yourself to the point where you can compete it becomes oh these all these women are all these women are worthless none of them are worth your time they don't deserve relationships they don't deserve marriage as women as women as women you are the king you are the alpha male you're, you're red pilled you're a liberate it becomes it, that is what they want to hear because that feeds their ego because their egos are usually damaged and bruised because they cannot get attention from women that's really what it comes down to and so you don't want to placate to those kind of men those are not the kind of men <laughs> whose attraction you want, whose validation you want. They're not, in real life, ladies, these are not the kind of men that you want to start families with, (laughs) that you want to have as your husband or your life partner. So why do you want their validation online? Like, really, I suggest to the young lady who on the show and to the women who who in general desire this, why? Why do you want validation from men who in the real world cannot compete? And none of that is what you're going to achieve by acting like a pick me. I'm just telling you, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get the attention that you want, especially from the men that you actually want to be validated from, because none of these men are, are the type of men that you want to be validated. From. Like they are losers. I just have to be honest. Yeah, I just... I just don't understand. I mean, I do understand because of what I just said. I just, but what I don't understand is why it's not more clear. Why a lot of these men are, or should I say the men, (laughs) the men in these communities don't realize that they are the content, right? 
that a lot of these content creators recognize that their following consists of men who don't have successful interactions with women and therefore don't know any better. And so they're taking advantage of them. They're taking advantage of you. If you're watching this video, they are taking advantage of you. They are taking advantage of the fact that you do not have the social development skills or, you know, the looks or the mannerisms or the posturing to attract women. They're taking advantage of you. They're not here to help you. They're not on your side. <laughs> they know that you are lonely and disgruntled and sexually frustrated. And so they're literally monetizing your desire to feel connected. And I just don't understand why, you know, if, you, if your whole thing about being a part of, you know, this community and your red pill is not being taken advantage of by women, why would you want to be taken advantage of by men? Why would you want to be taken advantage of by men who make money off of you and then go pay for these sex workers and have and have access to them via their finances because of the money that you donate. Why would that be something that you're okay with? I would think that you would be much more self-aware of the fact that your viewership is being taken advantage of. And let me tell you something that a lot of your, you know, idols and the men that you want to listen to won't tell you is you can change your interactions with women by changing certain aspects of yourself. And I understand that it's hard as a man to conceptualize the fact that you also have to compete because that's usually like a, a, a concept that women are told. Women are always told, oh, you're, if you're too fat, lose weight. If you're too skinny, gain weight. If your hair is ugly, change it. If your skin is bad. Like women are very used to having our appearances critiqued and having people tell us we need to improve ourselves or make ourselves better. That's unfortunately... Um, something a lot of women hear from a teenager, from when you're a teenager, but it, it's harder for a man to understand that you have to compete with other men, right? Not just in a workplace, but you have to compete in the dating market. You have to possess qualities that are attractive to women. And if you don't, some of those you can change, some of those you can work on, some of those you can cultivate aspects that will make yourself attractive. And all, overall, like I said in one of my other videos, you're going to have a better outcome if you take control of what you can control and just compete, compete better versus listening to these men on online that have no real intentions of helping you, have no real intentions of giving you any insight that can actually be useful and change the, the trajectory of your life. Because all they want to do is keep you where you are. So you keep coming back to their channels to listen. That it keeps feeding your, your insecurities. So that's really all I have to say on this matter. You know, it's really, it's really sad <laughs> that, you know, so many of our young black men are caught up in this kind of content. I think it can be really damaging long term. But, you know, it is what it is. Yes, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please comment below if you're feeling what I'm saying. But please just be respectful if you're not. If you're not feeling what I'm saying, that's fine. Be respectful. That's all I request. Don't forget to thumbs up my video before you leave. And make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of my content. But, yes, take care. Bye. <laughs>